Last time, we traversed the many dangerous animals and not-so-extra-large monsters that resided within the confines of Skull Island. But across the world, and even beyond the stars, lie a litany of nature-defying leviathans known as titans, or, to our own world's terminology, kaijus. Prophesied as the true rulers of Earth over humanity's long reign, these monsters will often find massive confrontation within themselves to establish dominance overall. Although often in these battles for supremacy, a large portion of civilized society will be flattened and wiped out in the process, whether they intend to or not. For a lot of people out there, it's a no damn brainer that this is probably one of the most unsurvivable scenarios I have covered yet. Cranking things up beyond stuff like zombies, aliens, horror-centric realms, and mutants, we turn our danger scale up to 11 today. This time around, we are discussing the embodiment of nuclear warfare visualized and marketed for over half a century. Grape Ape is totally a kaiju. It's we'll Gojira, you moron! Rodan Avadan. If you dislike this video, you'll be condemned to a life on Monster Island. Don't worry, it's just a name. He said it was just a name! What he meant is that Monster Island is actually a peninsula! Kids magically either cannot be killed by these monsters or somehow understand the monsters because of plot armor. Why the hell did the first movie have so little Godzilla and Walter White and have so many time skips? I just want to see some monsters fight, bro! Nothing in this universe will ever compare to Godzilla's most powerful attack. <laughs> Let them fight! Respect yo woman, and respect yo queen! The Taco Bell Chihuahua could totally take out Godzilla, and an analogy for Mother Earth taking itself back from the destructive nature of man franchise itself. This time, we are telling you why you wouldn't survive Godzilla's MonsterVerse. <laughs> I think I just shit myself. Now, if you are here after watching my Why You Wouldn't Survive Kong Skull Island, you'll remember me teasing the island's importance to the broad landscape of the titans and kaijus. Well, kaiju, translating directly as a strange beast, means these behemoths are more than just gigantic animals, being monsters hundreds to thousands of feet tall that are considered to carry divine power that define Earth's natural order, having lived over hundreds of millions of years. So, what are we looking at when it comes to the diverse death pool of monstrosities that will not only terrorize humanity, but traverse the globe and alter it to fit their needs? Well, their histories date back to over 250 million years ago. While a number of monsters go back even further, we will start with the most notable icon of the franchise, Godzilla, attacking the blue insectoid kaiju Shinomura, nearly killing it as the meteor that caused the Permian-Triassic era to end in a total extinction event. While 96% of all marine life and 70% of all landfaring life on the planet was wiped out in moments by this meteor, it also altered the planet's atmospheric radiation, forcing Godzilla to flee deep underwater to approach the Earth's core and feed on the planet's natural radiation from there and hibernate for countless time periods. 
Godzilla would occasionally surface from time to time throughout human history, sparking renditions into many cultures. But it wasn't until 1945 where the resurgence of these kaijus upon Earth was spurred by the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. This level of radiation not only attracted Godzilla, but also saw the revival of Shinemura, wherein, after Godzilla would chase down his prey of 250 million years ago for nearly a decade across the Pacific Ocean. Their pursuit would only be sailors' tales and myths until 1954, when nuclear submarines of American and Soviet affiliation drew too close to Godzilla deep under the ocean. Our gigantic reptile friend, detecting the source of radiation from the submarines, decided to surface for good to acquire more of this man-made radiation and to finally take down Shinomura. The US and Russian militaries bearing witness to these monsters' existence and their fight launched a series of nuclear attacks across the Marshall Islands, although this was disclosed to the public as nothing more than atomic bomb testing, until eventually the two monsters would be led to Bikini Atoll, where the world's first dry fuel hydrogen bomb was detonated. While it did completely kill and disintegrate Shinomura, Godzilla would survive only to disappear once more. Literal nuclear strikes and an H-bomb on this towering lizard wouldn't stop its relentless fight against another creature of its stature, causing it to only go and take a nap for a few decades. In the meantime, a secret organization known as Monarch dedicated to the research of what they referred to as Massive Unidentified Terrestrial Organisms, or MUTOs, would be established. After discovering cave paintings of the Titans by ancient human civilizations and multiple excursions to Skull Island, Monarch set off across the world searching for more of these gigantic creatures. From there, they would keep watch over many sites of hibernating titans, monitoring and studying them, and inadvertently, and advertently sometimes, awakening them. Now, there are a few things to take note of when taking into consideration the Titans, one of which is their relentless need for radiation to survive, grow, and, in some cases, repopulate. Wherever they roam or gestate, their mere presence will leave dangerously high levels of radiation in their wake, enough to weaken, destroy, and or mutate the DNA of human beings and most natural wildlife to cause them to slowly die or develop aggressive cancer, although the background radiation around them will tend to not be there in some cases because they are completely absorbing it. They will seek out any sources of high nuclear outflow, mainly nuclear plants, submarines, and nuclear waste disposal sites like the ones found in Nevada's Yucca Mountain Nuclear Waste Repository, causing destruction of epic proportions and disregarding all man-made structures and natural barriers in their way, causing untold amounts of casualties so they may feed and strengthen themselves in the process. Process. Attempting to kill them while absorbing all of this radiation would be a high-risk situation, considering the possibility that extinguishing them during this absorbing process could catastrophically release all of their harnessed nuclear energy and effectively turn them into a megaton bomb, wiping out everything in a very wide mile radius, as if setting off another Hiroshima, but to a much higher magnitude. Basically meaning all we can do is watch and wait for their eventual awakening while they feed and prepare any possible, if at all, countermeasures. Now, fighting back against them with their highest militarized powers can often only serve to slightly stun or just highly irritate the Titans. High caliber rounds, napalm strikes, missile strikes, all seemingly pointless against their gigantic frames. Some of these monsters even having the ability to release EMPs to disable all electronics, shutting down jets, and more. Of course, you can always say, well, we can resort to the nuclear option. However, this time around, the Titans can detect these weapons from far away, akin to a great white shark smelling blood in the waters of the ocean. Launching nuclear devices against them may be effective if detonated, but only if something in the destructive range of the H-bomb is used. But if these monsters were to get to the explosives before they are detonated or launched and procure them, they could easily seek to nesting near the device to consume its background radiation or completely consuming the nukes themselves, basically turning our nuclear bombs into breakfast 
Hell, their size alone should be proof enough of your non-survival. Military helicopters being ignored and destroyed by a simple bat of a wing. Giant warships being brushed to the side as titans swim by. Buildings just being leveled as they simply walk to their set destinations. They're not even trying to destroy stuff. You're just in their way. Humanity, for a majority of the time, is just an easily destructible obstacle that provides the titans the sustenance they needed to take back planet Earth. These capabilities at their disposal are not their most terrifying, however. No, what makes them such a dangerous threat to the planet beyond being seemingly impossible to kill by human means or their reverence for radiation, but it's the fact that their presence and emergence can spark natural disasters of colossally high proportions. Merely awakening from their slumbers or being born into our world was enough to cause 6.2 magnitude earthquakes, tsunamis that consumed major cities just from coming up out of the ocean, volcanic eruptions that blanketed civilizations from emerging at the volcano's cusp, high winds that blew down all before it just from flying by, and basically their mere existence can change the ecosystems of the planet Earth. But these are just the base foundations of the Titans, something they all share inherently or their dangers, as each individually established kaiju holds within them tailor-made capabilities. Starting with the creatures that got stuck with their placeholder name, the Mutos. Just like me and my channel, yep, that's right, While Such Gaming was a joke name I never intended to stick with. But here we are five years later. It was the discovery of a site in the Philippines where the skeleton of a creature similar to Godzilla was found. Within that frame lied parasitic spores that would become the Mutos. Millions of years ago, these creatures would kill other titans and burrow inside their bodies to feed off the decaying corpses' natural radiation. In our current era, they will enter a cocoon-like state near nuclear reactors or deposits and completely drain them before awakening. The Mutos, even in their inert state in their cocoons, cannot be killed by high concentrations of electrical impulses directed into its entombment. They will begin life as ancient parasitic titans resembling demonic-looking bats with gorging fangs and insect-like legs and claws that they use to stab at buildings and other titans. Their presence can enact an electromagnetic pulse five miles wide that was powerful enough to knock out power across all of San Francisco. This EMP also works as a natural defense to the natural abilities of other titans, like causing Godzilla's signature atomic breath to be unusable. In their species, there is a bit of sexual dimorphism, with the two Mutos present in the first film, with the male being smaller but having the ability to fly, and the female being much thicker. But we like our women thick, don't we fellas? Damn boy, he's sick! Male and female Mutos that are involved as partners will work cooperatively to meet their goals, working in conjunction with each other to defeat any opposition, with the male dominating the air, taking out any aerial units, and gaining the high ground against land units, while the female's naturally bulky frame allows her to plow through enemies with relative ease. The female can also engage in big monster sex to produce hundreds of eggs, either laying them inside the dead body of other titans Titans, or near nuclear warheads, often burrowing beneath the earth so that the eggs will hatch and feed off the radiation and subsequently grow over the next few years, eventually reproducing uncontrollably across the globe. Ironically, while they are parasitic and kill other titans to use their bodies as incubation chambers and unknowingly plow through human civilizations just to get to their destination, they are purely animals relying on instinct to feed, survive, and nurture their youth. Their cooperative nature and relentless campaign to search for nuclear food sources to reproduce makes them a threat that can result in hundreds of more threats if left unchecked. Especially since the females of the species can grow and mutate if they are allowed to flourish, turning into supreme mutos. Now, lying dormant within the inactive volcano of a coastal Mexican island is the titan Rodan, a gigantic avian beast similar in physique and stature to the pterosaur, the Pteranodon. Standing 153 feet tall, its primary method of movement is flight, fast enough in its aviation to easily catch up to and even outspeed US fighter jets traveling 
at an average speed of 0.9 Mach speed, or 690 miles per hour. It can spin its wings while at the speed in a cyclone motion to wipe out and destroy anything within its horizontal radius. If not for its monumental wings, its sharp talons and beak can quickly crush and destroy military-grade fighter jets in moments. Its most notable traits, though, are its natural bio-volcanic nature. Harboring itself within lava would mean it would have to handle those high temperatures. Its internal system is composed of a volcanic combustion system that radiates heat from its body, reaching temperatures of 1200 degrees Celsius or 2192 degrees Fahrenheit meaning anything that draws near it could instantly, animate or inanimate, suddenly burst into flames and or melt, and causing any piercing damage to this beast will cause its magma blood to pour out and possibly cause more harm to others. Due to its high speed and red hot abilities, its wings can easily cause drift streams behind and beneath its trajectory to devastate anything below, instantly destroying buildings, no matter their size, and slingshotting people, vehicles, and debris as if an F5 tornado had suddenly blown through the area in a flash. It doesn't even have to touch what it deems as foes or prey. Simply flying past them, pretty much anything we make will either be blown away or destroyed instantly. Especially considering the fact that Rodan can trigger explosive eruptions if he so chooses while flying over any volcanoes. Rodan is a neutral beast. He will not attack if not provoked at first, but will willingly obey any Alpha Titan that defeats it in battle, meaning if a Titan stronger than it deems humanity a blight that must be extinguished, our Pteranodon friend will be happy to oblige with gale force winds and numerous volcanic eruptions resulting in leveled cities and many more townships mimicking the outcome of Mount Vesuvius and the ruins of Pompeii, leaving nothing but ash, wreckage, and death in its winged wake. Caterpie, Metapod, fucking Volcarona. Be careful about having lumps around this girl or else she'll come crashing in. Being a gigantic larva with docile nature at its core. Being able to spit large volumes of silk to pin foes from afar while crushing anything that attacks it. Glowing bright red when it feels threatened and keeping a blue hue when in a calm state due to her bioluminescence. Once it has hatched itself, not long after will the pupa mothra seek to cocoon itself within its own silk in a damp or hard to reach place so that it may crack open once more so that she may become Finally, I'm a beautiful butterfly! <laughs> to unfurl its rather awe-inspiring wings and take flight. She is adorned with an abdominal stinger, pretty much the size of the Seattle Space Needle and just as pointed, enough to be able to fully penetrate other monsters like Rodan. Similarly, she also stands upon limbs of sharpened points that it can use to latch onto targets and eviscerate them. She will also retain her main defensive mechanism from her larval state and be able to shoot silk webbing at foes to incapacitate them and possibly impale them with her many mandibles or blast them with her god rays. She naturally emanates high volumes of energy, releasing god rays of beta wave bioluminescence that can cause powerful and destructive storms, but also release high levels of radiation. While this would be a death sentence for human life, to other titans, this is the perfect support character to their high DPS. For you see, Mothra works as a symbiotic titan. Hehe. <laughs> She will fight and coordinate with titans like Godzilla to reach a common goal, often fighting to defend them from attackers so they are not overwhelmed. Titans working together to defeat a common foe can only cause more destruction if they so wish. Her natural radiance as an energy dispersing queen, being able to power up the nuclear reactor that is her king, even when dying, exhausting her radiation reserves to magnify the strength of Godzilla 
to critical mass. So basically, killing her if she is tag teaming with another Titan could mean making the other Titan in question much, much, much more of a threat. But even killing her would not put an end to her supportive nature of other Titans. Her most potent and pretty much overpowered ability is that she can basically reincarnate herself, doing so by preemptively laying an egg before reaching maturity into the Imago state. When her body shuts down and she passes the frame of death's door, her consciousness, memories and all, will transfer to her previous egg to begin life anew. Now, out of these titans, some may hail from beyond the stars to herald themselves as the true leader of the kaijus and king amongst the earth. Not being a natural part of our world's ecosystem or order comes the three-headed dragon known as King Ghidorah. Standing over 500 feet tall, this inspiration for Greek mythology's Hydra is extremely hostile and does not hesitate to kill any and everything that does not bow before it, being only content contained in the rather fitting lifeless tundra of the Antarctic deep under its glacial caps. Each of its three heads think and act independently of each other with differing personalities, with the left head being seemingly docile, the right head being easily irritable and prone to violent outbursts, and the middle being a controlling and dominant type. Basically, this beast is showing its balance in its malevolence, but having three different perspectives to weight its options in battle and destruction is going to be quite a task to face. Each head acting on its own in a direct confrontation, biting and lunging at targets in each direction, being harder to predict its movements, all while swinging its massive tail to bash enemies and surfaces, and using each of its extremities to pick up any object. Even Godzilla, who weighs nearly 100,000 tons, and carry it as high as Earth's troposphere to make them fall as high as 6 kilometers to the Earth's surface. Oh, also, when it comes to the heads, I wanted to mention this, but the behind the scenes for Ghidorah where they had to do the mocap for the three heads' different personalities is so goofy and so cool. I just wanted to show you this. Its flesh is clad in nearly an entire gold scaling, giving it not only higher resistance to just about any kind of weaponry we have at our disposal, even the atomic breath of Godzilla himself, but these golden scales will also conduct its already generating internal electrical current flow outwards from its own body. If it wants to get more electricity within itself, it can drain the energy of any electrical sources by simply biting into them like electrical power plants of massive cities and harness the current for itself and use it in its energy-based blasts in area of effect storms. It will also manipulate electrical currents and drastically heat up water vapor within the air to generate paranormal storms in a wide outward radius of itself, often clouding this dragon in a thickly dense electrical storm that can grow powerful enough to reach a category six hurricane, which statistically has never occurred in recorded human history, with only Category 5 hurricanes reaching 157 mile per hour winds, enough to uproot trees and send them flying, level mobile homes and wooden made households, and level other buildings entirely basically wiping out cities because it creates storms just for being nearby. It will maneuver our world with its massive wings, being able to ascend its entire mass with just one flap of these wings and travel across oceans in a matter of hours, while also being able to shield itself with these massive wings, preventing any damage from missile fire and nuclear blasts that may harm it. Its wings can also muster gale force winds to blow away anything that stands before it. For anything that may be too far from its reach, Ghidorah can muster the power of its internal electricity to fire gravity beams from each of its three mouths, with these beams concentrated in their focused electrical currents enough to disintegrate buildings and instantly vaporize any humans hit by it, even enough to completely obliterate other weakened titans like Mothra. If we somehow mustered the power and capabilities to cause extensive damage to Ghidorah, it would most likely be 
for naught. If there is any source of nearby radiation or electricity, the king himself will siphon this energy in order to spur a regenerative process to bring back any part of its body that it can, even completely regaining one of its decapitated heads where it started to grow back from the tongue up. Its wide array of destructive capabilities, ranging from generating Category 6 hurricanes and billowing clouds in its midst to make any incoming military vehicles have no chance of even approaching it, and if they do, being grabbed, ripped apart by three heads, destroyed by its guard rays, smashed under its tail, or if it's feeling extra sadistic while it drains all the power in the nearby area to magnify its natural resistances and area of effect storm, can send you flying into the air six miles high, and you'll probably die of a heart attack before you make impact. But if it's that huge, you'll probably just be swallowed whole. But being a creature not from our planet, it does not require oxygen allowing it to pretty much navigate wherever it may wish in the reaches of space and more. However, submerging in the ocean can heavily diminish its maneuverability, maybe explaining how it was frozen in the Antarctic in the first place. This lack of reliance on oxygen gave Ghidorah a natural resistance to the one device that was able to nearly kill and eliminate the franchise's biggest threat in our planet's Alpha Titan. With an iconic roar rising from the ocean depths, with dorsal plates peeking from its back like a shark hunting its prey, existing as what Setezawa described as a territorial entity that works as nature's delicate balance, acting as Earth's pinnacle protector, or at least treating it as his territory. That's right, it's Godzilla. He does not desire to destroy or cause mayhem. However, he does not show interest in keeping humans alive when it comes comes down to the nitty gritty struggles and any collateral damage he causes is just reactionary. Whether it be destroying the Golden Gate Bridge because he was flinching from explosions or battling through San Francisco against the Mutos and knocking over buildings with thousands of people inside. However, if humans began acting in a way that would be detrimental to Earth's survival, well, Godzilla could turn his way of thinking when it comes to being passive about mankind. He could start beginning maybe an extinction level event of mankind, much like the anime adaptation, yet this time just periodically hunting large sections of human civilizations to wipe out large populations while searching for nuclear depositories and plants to get stronger, grow, and heal any damage he may take along the way. As stated before, this giant lizard is a 582 foot tall nuclear reactor that will actively seek radiation sources wherever it may find them and detect them. Considering nuclear devices hitting it leave it unscathed and even give it a bit of a power boost, with even 15 megaton blasts just causing it to hibernate. While if it becomes severely injured, even by an oxygen destroyer bomb, it can fully recover if hit by yet another nuclear blast. The most powerful bomb known to mankind, the most destructive force on the planet that we know currently, only works to heal this giant motherfucker. I mean, hell, look at his history. He has survived multiple extinction events spurred by numerous meteors that have struck the Earth. So while we figure out a viable defense against the Alpha Titan, he will be spending most of his time swimming across the open seas at a speed of 40 knots, or 46 miles per hour, swimming almost endlessly towards his targets for thousands of miles without any signs of exhaustion. When on land, his running speed is just as fast. His hardened skin and scales can withstand whatever firepower is thrown at it, unless it hits his only weak point, his skills. But due to his ability to learn from combat, he could easily seek to protect this weak spot if it is exploited too frequently. He prefers close quarters combat, using his tail, teeth, and arms to grapple, crush, and beat down any foes. Distance is not a problem for him either, as his signature atomic breath can be expelled from his mouth after a few moments of charging up his internal radiation reserves and his dorsal plates glowing a bright blue. This ray of light is capable of burning through any object and exploding anything else in an atomic fury. If he is given enough energy in his pursuits or given a high amount by a symbiotic kaiju like Mothra, he can reach hellish amounts of power, his body glowing as if enveloped in lava, with the immediate area melting around him. 
Godzilla in this state will basically be immune to any kind of damage that is thrown at it while it harnesses its overwhelming power and releases it as a thermonuclear pulse. An explosive blast reminiscent of a supernova that will expand abruptly and anything within the blast radius will evaporate and burn away into dust within seconds, becoming the nuke that awakened him and destroying Ghidorah and a majority of Boston in the process. An unkillable giant lizard who can destroy major cities just by moving through them, behead and vaporize anything that opposes him, and can regenerate with our most powerful weapons known to mankind, while becoming a magnified version of those said nukes, could definitely lead to the end of humanity. Godzilla has remained victorious in each of his battles due to his intelligence, array of abilities, and his overall dominating nature. Standing tall as the Alpha Titan, all other Titans around the globe will bow to and basically obey his wishes when it comes to the status quo of how the world should exist. Godzilla wishing in the series of the MonsterVerse to have Earth remain as it was before the Titans, a peaceful state yet filled with giant monsters. But as I stated earlier, if Godzilla were to deem mankind a nuisance that must be eradicated, not only could he use his own prowess to kill all humans, but he will command the rest of the Titans to do so as well, as King Ghidorah had done before when he had seemingly won where Ghidorah had ordered the hunt and destruction of all human life, with some of these titans roaming further. Like the Behemoth, a mammoth titan of 254 foot stature that acts as a plow for nature, leveling anything in its path, and whatever is left after its slow walk is highly irradiated, forcing human life out so that jungle and forest-like growths can take over. Sela, a highly armored spider and squid-like hybrid of an amphibious titan at 341 feet, will devour the corpses of any titans left behind. To digest and process their nutrients as waterborne bacteria she may expose to water supplies nearby. Although there is a positive to this arachnophobia Cthulhu, because she breathes out and emits liquid nitrogen into the air in high volumes, basically working to reverse global warming, basically saying, hey, we can fix the planet in the wake of humans being extinguished. And last of the visually shown titans is Methuselah, a giant turtle-like kaiju with tons of forestation and giant rocks on its back, much like the giant Torterra Pokemon in Detective Pikachu. Of course, there are over a dozen more titans that can awaken and beckon the call of whatever Alpha Titan commands them to do. But at this point, you can get the gist of what these things are capable of and how each of them is pretty much a god that will be unscathed by human intervention. Now, you probably want me to bring it up real quick, but Kong is considered a titan in this world as well, who does not abide by the rules of these other titans, but you can get more details on our big monkey friend in my previous video. But Kong is one of the only methods humans can resort to when fighting the unwinnable battle against the titans of the world. By possibly making peace with the giant gorilla by giving him a lot of bananas and bringing him to the fight against the dominant titan that is either Godzilla or Ghidorah, he could possibly find a way to victory in his own regard. But we're not going to discuss any more on that. That's what Godzilla vs. Kong is coming out to discover. Other methods for humans to fight back include the device called the Orca, if we can make it within the time before going extinct. The Orca, acting as a communication device that perfectly replicates the bioacoustics of any discovered Titan and manipulates these frequencies to our advantage, since the Titans communicate across the planet to each other via this method. Being able to do so would allow humans to trick titans into obeying orders, luring in titans, repelling them away, or even in the case of baby Mothra, calming them down in a frantic state. But that's if it works. If, say, an alpha titan figured out we're using this orca, it would just serve to piss them off more and cause more destruction from there. But that's probably our best bet, is using the orca. There was the oxygen destroyer device, a countermeasure to the nuclear affinity of most of the titans. 
and once triggered, this device will open up, releasing a chemical known as micro-oxygen into the ocean. Once this chemical interacts with H2O, it will isolate oxygen molecules from the water, splitting them apart and liquefying them rapidly, causing a chain reaction that will cause any organic life within the reaction to suffocate excruciatingly right before disintegrating in moments. While it was highly effective against Godzilla, forcing him to retreat and possibly slowly die if it had not been for the direct nuclear blast, it showed no effect on the extraterrestrial titan Ghidorah, meaning if there are any other spacefaring titans that arrive on our planet, this last resort weapon of the oxygen destroyer device will prove to be more and more useless. And of course, for a lot of you nerds out there, we can also see to building giant mechs like Pacific Rim to defeat these kaijus, seeing if we even had the technology, time, know-how, and resources to even accomplish this massive feat. But maybe we could squeeze out a Mecha Godzilla. Like, I'm sure there's going to be one in the upcoming movie that's going to be the bad guy of the movie that Kong and Godzilla have to fight against. But the bottom line of all of this is that humanity, as it stands right now, would not amount to anything against pretty much any of these titans, especially of the expertise behind Rodan, Mothra, the Mutos, Kong, and especially Ghidorah and Godzilla. The characters of the MonsterVerse franchise have often stated that once they had arisen, the world as we knew it no longer existed, and humanity as a whole was now living in their world. We could throw man, woman, and child relentlessly at them to deter and distract them while we struggle to figure out how to fight back. But they, as a whole, would be way, way, way too much to handle if anything could be used as a reference point as if Godzilla had decided that the planet was better off without us, you can look no further than the anime movie Planet of the Monsters that details how Godzilla's presence on Earth had rapidly altered the atmosphere to suit his radiation needs, irradiating the planet and altering all life to make it uninhabitable to us. A planet dominated by him or Ghidorah would see drastic upticks in catastrophic weather out of nowhere, destroying so much of civilization without even the Titans themselves needing to be present. All of our military might, with our countries united, could do nothing against embodiments of Mother Nature. The Mutos were populating at an exorbitant rate to wipe out all electrical currents that we used to survive. Rodan zooming by countrysides and islands causing gale force winds and erupting volcanoes. Ghidorah literally altering the Earth's atmosphere while it makes all the other titans its bitches and vaporizing anything else and causing some awful storms in the process. And Godzilla followed by Mothra becoming a nuclear holocaust from land, sea, or air. Humanity will fall and the titans will rise. Well, that about wraps up this monster-filled look at a scenario that you obviously knew was it really survivable, and I'm ready for the comments down below telling me so. I know you're going to say, oh, I know I wasn't going to survive this, but hey, any comment is good for the algorithm, and while you're in the comment section, feel free to let me know your thoughts. What else about this universe did I miss out on, miss completely, get wrong, or get right? What do you want to see next on the channel? I have a special collab coming out next week to finally wrap up things before the big movie comes out on March 31st to HBO Max, unless they delay it again. If you want to let yourself be heard as a Titan, you can. Just don't go yelling out loud in your room trying to reach me. You can, however, support the channel just by liking the vid and subscribing. And maybe if you want to throw in some bucks at the channel to be featured here, you can. From longtime donators to Patreon patrons who get to see my videos before anyone else to YouTube channel members. I also have moved my streams to Twitch, so if you want to be featured on my live stream donation lists here, you better follow me at twitch.tv slash W0W such gaming. Yes, that's a wow with the zero because someone else yoinked my name before I started my Twitch. I'm so depressed I can't even blink. But oh well, check me out there for all my future streams on Twitch. Special thanks to Wisefish for editing today's video, and thank you once again for watching. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay well, and stay... <laughs>